but you've just downloaded Clip Studio Paint. This is what it looks like right out of the box. And um, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty confusing. Let's go ahead and build my optimized Clip Studio Paint workspace together, and I'll show you some of my favorite features and where to find them. This tutorial is gonna work for desktop or for iPad, wherever you're using Clip Studio Paint. Um, this is an iPad, but they have made it so that the iPad app looks almost identical to the desktop app, which is incredible and so useful for like cross-platform editing and stuff like that. It makes it so easy for me to move things from my iPad to my PC and continue to work on them. There are a few things like the command bar up at the top that when you reset the workspace doesn't really, it doesn't wipe all of those preferences. So you can see that's already set up. There might be a couple of other things like that kind of in the deep settings, but I think all the big things we'll be able to cover. The first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is deal with this edge keyboard. If you're working with Clip Studio Paint on an iPad, anytime you swipe in from left or right on the screen, you'll get this little keyboard pop up. And that's where you're gonna find your control shift option and command as well as like space, just kind of the, all little modifier keys. So I, I go to preferences, edge keyboard, and set this to view button instead. And that gives me this little, this little guy in the corner, which you can move around with your finger and kind of place that wherever you would like so that it's not in the way. I find this gives me a lot more flexibility in that I'm not constantly bringing that in or swiping it away when I'm trying to use it. Tap the button to show the keyboard and tap the button again to hide the keyboard is basically how that works. Next, you can see I'm just expanding the tool menu so we can see all of our little sub tools easier. And I'm gonna go ahead and move some of this stuff around so that it's easier for me to use. Eventually, I wanna have all of these sub tools on the right hand side of the screen because I'm right handed. All of these little buttons are really small, so I'm gonna to wanna to use my stylus or my Apple pencil instead of my fingers to activate these. I'm dragging out the brush size menu because I wanna have that as a long strip on the side rather than a little block like that. Because you can use your finger to scroll up and down on this as well as the stylus, it makes it really easy to change your brush sizes. And here you can see I've remembered that I'm right-handed and I'm gonna move that over to the right with everything else. I'm gonna go up to the window tab and I'm gonna bring down a couple of menus that aren't in the initial default view like the navigator, that's something that I use constantly. I love that tool. So we're gonna bring down the navigator and I'll go ahead and open a new canvas so you guys can kind of see what that does. It just gives you a full view and it gives you a couple of different um, moving and rotating and zooming options that I'll demo in a little bit. I also want the color wheel and the color slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump those over underneath the navigator. You can see I'm moving these by just tapping and holding on the name of the menu. So I've brought over the color set menu as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just shrink that down to a size that's usable for my Apple Pencil. I don't need that menu to be huge. This one, the color history, I don't use. So I just drag the menu out and then click the X in the top corner. I have recently learned about the quick access menu and I'm absolutely in love with it. I use it constantly. So I'm gonna put that over on the left hand side because I mostly use that as little buttons for my left hand. You can leave all of your different quick access menus as buttons or you can change it like this to the drop down. I'm also going to change my little tiles under view I think is where you look for that. It's gonna take me a minute I think to find it. <laughs> so view and then there's a bunch of different ways that you can you can set up those little buttons. Here you can kind of set them up like the subtool menus, which is an interesting one. It doesn't really work for my like left-handed approach where I want to toggle these tools with my left with my left hand thumb or my left hand pointer finger. So I'm gonna set these as medium tiles and then I'm gonna kind of shrink that to the size that I like. So since I started using the quick access, I don't use my sub tool menu a ton, except for maybe to set up quick access <laughs> tools. So I've collapsed all of these, the like pen tools, the pen properties, and the layer menus just kind of into this little collapsible menu on the side. And then that way I can kind of bring them up when I need them really easily, but they're also not just in the way on my canvas. 
So first we've got the tools and then the subtools, subtool properties, layers, and layer properties. And then that last button is materials, which I hardly ever use unless I'm installing a new tool. There's two different modes for this little stack of um, tools and layer properties and stuff like that. You can view it as a tab or a pop-up. I use them interchangeably depending on kind of what I'm doing. If I'm animating, a lot of the time I'll have it as a tab because I need to get through a bunch of layers and have them all available on the side. If I'm just normally illustrating or I'm working on something that has kind of a bigger canvas, I'll have it as a pop-up. That way when you tap into the canvas area, that pop-up will just collapse again. To change that, you just tap and hold on any of those icons on the side. A lot of the time in Clip Studio Paint, I'm working on animations. So I like to have my timeline and also my animation cells, which is where the light box is. Um, I like to have those kind of easy to get to, but not on my canvas all the time. So I will sort of put those in the menus and then I'll just kind of collapse them using the little arrow system that Clip has. So I don't want that to be part of my like navigator rail I want it to be its own thing. And you can see up at the top of that, there's little menus and then there's a little right-handed like single arrow and then a double arrow. The double arrow is what basically what hides that completely. The single arrow just kind of gives you the little, the little rail. <laughs> so I use the double arrows to hide both of those and then I can just kind of pop those out anytime I need to animate. This is me just locking the docks down. You go to palette dock and like fix width and everything underneath those, just those three top options and underneath them palette docks. And that basically locks it so that you're not constantly moving your menus around. It still allows you to pop out those animation windows, but it lets you use the, the like scroll bars a little easier without it trying to grab the palette and resize it every time, which I find so annoying. I'm not going to add anything to my command bar because I kind of like the way it is right now, but this is how you would do that if you want to add some things to your command bar. That's the bar underneath file edit animation up at the top. Um, I like to have like open new canvas, uh, undo, redo kind of up there. I find that they're a lot easier to get to that way than trying to hunt through a bunch of menus. It's kind of like quick access light. <laughs> so you get just, just the icons up there. Um, I have copy or cut, copy, paste, delete, delete outside and fill that I use a ton as well as transform and then the like skewed transform. I can't remember what the actual title of that is. So here's delete, delete outside, a little fill bucket. I also have um, unselect and invert select on there. And then here's just kind of like transform tools. It makes things really easy to get to. So stuff like um, exporting a PNG I have up there, adding a new layer, the Gaussian blur, <laughs> like anything that you use a ton and you find yourself going through the same menus over and over again, you can kind of key it into the little command bar up there and it'll just happen in one tap. So this is the navigation tool. I'm just kind of demoing like it has like a fit to screen. It has a really easy flip horizontal flip vertical and then some rotation tools. This is the color wheel. Basically self-explanatory if you've used a digital uh, art program before, just kind of move the little dot around until you like the color. Um, I like the color sliders on here as well because I like to be able to control saturation and value or whatever the V is, I guess it's value. <laughs> I like to have that available at all times also. This is the color sets. I have a bunch of custom color sets set up that way. It's just kind of little palettes that I can kind of manage. I've got one of those that's basically just kind of a scrap bin for all of the projects that I'm kind of working on. And I'll just delete stuff out of there as I kind of close those projects. The layers aren't set up exactly how I want them when this comes out of the box. I don't want to see the whole canvas and I kind of want the thumbnails to be a little bit bigger in the layer stack. So I'll set this to show layer area only um, so that that will only show that area. And then I will set it to be just like a medium sized. 
and that's pretty much it. I've got all my tools set up and that's kind of how I find everything, how I locate stuff. If you have any questions about where to find things or you see a tool that you've never seen before, leave those in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer those. If you're looking for more content like this, check out my recent video on Clip Studio Paint correction layers or my playlist of Clip Studio Paint quick tips. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Please leave any questions or comments down below and check out the description for all of the links. This video was brought to you by my amazing patrons, Jesse C, Anthony Jets, and Terror Billie Jean. Thank you guys so much for your support.